Hello, my name is Steve and in this video we're going to do a pretty robust tutorial on how you can set up uh, the Arcade Racer Racing Game Development Kit. So this is the package I wrote and it, I've spent about four years iterating on it and this is the final version. Um, so everybody who has Racing Game Template, you get this for free. And this tutorial will show you how to set up basically all of the, the initial first steps and go through the workflow so you can actually get to the point where you can start editing and creating your own game. So in this video, I'm using Racetrack Generator. I'll use that to create a new race scene. And I'm also using Fantastic Race Car 13. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is just create a racetrack with Racetrack Generator. So I'll open the window and I'll click around a bit. I'm going to try to find something smaller uh, just so it's a quicker tutorial. This one seems pretty small. Um, just go ahead and click that Combine Meshes button. And then that saved the racetrack for us. I probably should have read the folder that it saved it to, but it looks like it's right up here. So actually, let's go ahead and delete this and bring in the combined one. So now I have a racetrack and uh, it looks pretty cool, pretty detailed. I like this asset. Um, I would highly recommend it if you want to make a bunch of racing games and just have different style tracks uh, without much effort. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually not that folder. So for Arcade Racer, well, let's go ahead and save the scene. We will call it uh, Custom Track. And next I will go into the game template Windows Standalone. And when you import this package, um, you should get a notification, but it looked like it didn't pop up for some reason. If it doesn't, uh, you could select Tools, turn the game on, Arcade Racer, Welcome Window. And uh, you basically just want to import your project settings. So you press this big button in the middle, Import Project Settings for Standalone Game Template. And then what that gives you is the editor build settings, the input manager, and the tag manager. Let's go ahead and import those. So now if I go to file build settings, you can see all of the build settings are set up for us now. So we have the main menu, the vehicle select menu, the open world, race defeat, race victory screens, and the quick race screens, uh, or quick race scenes. Um, so now what I want to do is, I guess we could go about this two different ways. So we can go into the scene that's set up for Quick Race Zero, and we can we can redo this scene, um, which is kind of the way I would recommend. Also notice when I opened a scene, it says it wants to import TextMesh Pro Essentials. Go ahead and do that. So any scene that uses TextMesh Pro, it'll prompt you for that. Uh, because TextMesh Pro is not installed by default. All right, so so now we're in our quick race scene, and it and basically in this scene we have some spawn points. We have a race manager, a checkpoint manager, race information UI screen, uh, race completed UI screen. We have three different AI waypoint routes, standard event system and uh, a function that will reset the player to the current waypoint. If they become lost, they could press the R key. There's a shake transform manager um, that just makes the camera shake when you hit a wall or another car. An AI material manager, this just populates materials dynamically for the AI racers. And a bunch of environment geometry. And then we have just a default camera. So let's say we want to 
replace the art in the scene. Um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to get rid of these three AI waypoint routes because we'll we'll create our own. And the race manager has a reference to the waypoints. So the way this works is um, you could delete some of these waypoints if you want just by selecting them and, and pressing the delete or the minus symbol. Um, and you could also, if you look at the top of the inspector, we can alt plus left click in the scene view on a collider to spawn a new point, or we can hold alt control and left click to insert a point between two points. So we're going to end up redoing all of these. So I think what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and remove them all. Maybe I'll create a function to automatically reset this. Uh, you could also just add your own race manager to the scene and then assign the, the camera and the audio clip for the race timer. And you can have this canvas enabled on complete. Um, I'm just reusing the scene as a template scene so we don't have to make some common configurations like that. All right, so now there is no waypoints, but when we press that button, it doesn't delete the waypoints from the scene. So what you'll want to do is also make sure that you go and delete any child objects. So anytime you use that waypoint list to manually delete one of the nodes from the list, you also need to delete it from the scene. Um, just keep that in mind. So now we have a basic scene. Uh, it's all ready. Let's go ahead and actually delete the, let's see, what do we got? We have a mini map environment texture. I'm not going to delete this yet. I'm just going to disable it. And we have racing post. That's not going to be needed. The directional light. We're going to want to keep the directional light and we'll want to keep the minimap environment texture. We're just going to need to replace that texture at some point. So now we can just disable that. And this is what the minimap environment texture looks like. It's just a plane with an unlit material and it uses a top-down screenshot of the scene and, and that's it. So what you can do is orient the camera the way you need it to be. Uh, if you have a high resolution monitor, you can put this at 4K. You could also d really do whatever whatever you want to take this screenshot, but basically I just take a screenshot and then place that in the scene and align it with the geometry uh, in orthographic mode. And that That's basically it. Um, so now that we know what's in the scene, we can go ahead and disable this. We've basically talked about everything so far. Um, disable the checkpoint manager. This is just going to be a standard race. Um, so now what I can do is I can just take that custom track and I'll bring it into the scene. I could have just dragged the prefab into the scene as well. So now we have our custom track here and actually just so it's a little easier, I'm going to go to window rendering lighting settings and disable the fog. Actually, I'll, let me see. Yeah, I'm just going to disable the fog so it's easier to see. Put that lighting tab over behind my hierarchy for right now. All right, so now I have a racetrack in the scene, and you know what? I also want to I want to hide the UI for a little bit, um, and I don't recall off the top of my head how to do that through the Unity editor. So I'm just going to actually toggle off that race complete screen and the race information canvas. 
So all the stuff that we have disabled, I'm just going to go ahead and pull down here for right now. And the first thing we'll do is set up our, let's set up our AI waypoints. So you can select tools, turn the game on, arcade racer, create AI waypoint route. And what this does is it spawns an AI waypoint route in your scene. And now we just want to place route points throughout the scene. So first we want to figure out where the starting line is. Looks like this is the starting line, the start and the finish line. Um, so for this race, I will set up two AI waypoint routes. And the first one is the one we're setting up now. So let me refocus my camera. All right, so let's go ahead and select the AI waypoint route. And for this one, we're just going to hold down alt and click in the scene view. And that's going to spawn the, the waypoints for us. I just want to see exactly where I'm at. So this line right here will be the finish line. That'll be the start and the finish line. Okay, so I'm just going to hold down Alt and left click, and that's going to spawn the waypoints for me. We're just going to do this throughout the track to to basically tell the car where to go. Every time a car collides with one of these waypoints, it's that's basically how it updates its progress. So the car is always driving toward a waypoint. Let's see how big this track is, just so I have an idea of how many I'm going to need to set up. So about the distance that I'm setting them is a, a decent distance for your waypoints. If you run into some issues, you, you might want to have more or less of them. But in general, a few meters between each point is is pretty good. The nice thing about racetrack generator is it gives you a really nice optimized racetrack with almost no effort, which is really good for prototyping because if you're just trying to figure out what you're trying to build, you just make a track, toss it in the scene and set up some waypoints on it, create a race and, and you're good to go replace all of the geometry with more custom geometry if you wanted and use it as a starting point. Replace the textures and the materials, alter the geometry and the props that are in the scene. I mesh combined mine so it's more optimized, but it's not really something you absolutely need to do. So if you don't mesh combine, you could easily start editing all of that.
So if I could make a, a future update to the system, I would, I would like to add splines so that this path creation process is a little quicker. Um, but to be honest, there haven't really been very many sales of the asset. Um, I haven't sold a single copy at its new price point during the unity sales. I've sold a few, but honestly, this, this asset pretty much died because I increased the price and it's too high and unity doesn't allow us to change it once we participate in a sale. So I'm kind of stuck at a point where I've created this project and it's not selling and there's so so there's no revenue coming in um i think last month my my payment was 35 dollars from the unity asset store so i i didn't actually sell a single copy of this and yeah i i just i can't continue to dedicate time to this project if it's not going to sell and that's kind of where i'm at right now so i i'd like to continue it to improve it but without any sales there's, there's just no, it's not feasible. Um, I need to do stuff that'll make money, not, not continue to invest in something that is current. Like if you wanted this, you could find it for free from people who are pirating my asset, which kind of sucks, but I, I guess that's the way the world is now. Um, so Let's see, the last waypoint in this route. So each waypoint will have a car AI waypoint script attached to it. And that's really the primary thing that you're gonna wanna edit. You could also turn off the mesh renders for all of these, um, which you should. So we'll expand the on reach waypoint settings and we'll select a new route point. And for this new route point, so we're currently on the final waypoint, which is 164. We'll go ahead and we'll assign um, a new route point. And for some reason, when I laid out all of these waypoints, they didn't get their parent route assigned. Maybe something in the Unity API changed. Um, but the parent route, or actually, you know what? I think that's, it's been a while since I've actually jumped into this project. Let me just check something really quick. Maybe that's assigned on awake. No, it's not. So that's a bug. I need to fix it. Um, all of these AI waypoints, they should have their parent route assigned. And that's just the, the parent object, which is this car AI waypoint route. Um, so the next thing we want to do with these route points is we're going to enable use speed limit. And for right now, we're just going to set the speed limit to something like 50. And that's really all we need to set. So for each route waypoint, you can set a different speed limit and that'll basically slow the car down, uh, and, and cap the speed at whatever speed limit you set. So again, all we did to these waypoints was we made sure the parent route was assigned. We, um, we, we assigned the final route waypoint. The new route point is set to the first waypoint and that creates a loop basically. Um, so now at this point, and we also set a speed limit, so we can't actually start, let's see. I'm going to adjust these points a little bit. So this point I'll just so I could kind of get, well, let's see, actually, no, this, this is perfect actually. Um, so yeah, we do need to create another route now. Uh, so there's a hotkey for that control out alt R or you could do it from the window or a tools command, like we did the first time, create AI waypoint route. So with the new route selected, I'm pretty much gonna go through the same process. And this is why I would like to have 
some splines because then I could use some different logic. To, man to automatically place these points and just make a, make this process a little bit more efficient. Like I said, I don't think that's going to happen because of the current state of the project. So one of the things that caused me to increase the price was on the publisher forum, Unity... Uh, a lot of people were saying that assets on the store are underpriced, and I don't know what the motivation for people saying things is, but basically they were saying people are giving away their assets. And having a, a big, complete project like this, I I kind of felt like that message was directed to, to to publishers who have complex works and they're selling them for cheap. So when I was selling this project for like 60 bucks or a hundred bucks, that's pretty cheap actually. Um, that That's like not even a day's worth of pay. And so I, I felt like that message was in a way aimed at, at developers and publishers like myself. Um, but it it's completely untrue because obviously nobody's purchased it since I've raised the price. So I guess I learned a lesson. Don't don't listen to what random people say, even if they work for Unity, because they don't know what's best for you or your business or your projects. Um, I, th I think from Unity's perspective, they want everybody to raise their prices so they can make more money. And that makes sense, and now I, I think that's why that message was said, but basically killed my project. I think what would have been better is if I would have actually lowered the price instead of raising it, because then more people could use it. More people would be talking about it. Um, yeah, so I, I guess it's kind of a regret that I raised the price. I, I really wish I never did it especially now that I'm stuck in the situation where I can't change the price. I don't know why I'm zoomed in. It's probably faster if I zoom out so I don't have to keep moving the camera. So I will fix that bug that was not setting the waypoint routes properly. Um, this one I want moved up a little bit. And this one too. So all of these points, once you place them, you could still move them. And there is a gizmo setting for these as well. So if we ping the, the AI waypoint route settings, we could enable the gizmos and um, yeah, that'll just, let's see if, it uses the scene view a little bit. So if it doesn't show them all immediately, um, just zoom out a little bit. So, so now we can see where our waypoints are. We could see that some of them are not aligned perfectly. And you could go back and, and adjust all of the positioning for these as you go. This is just a pretty rough first pass.
And I don't really get much feedback for this project. I, I get people that tell me what they want. Um, so if you could, if you're using this project, if you have any specific or tangible feedback, that's always useful and appreciated. Okay, so now I have this one set up. Let's go ahead and make sure the... Huh, that's interesting. So... Yeah, I gotta figure out what's up with that. So these waypoints did have the parent route automatically assigned. Which is really interesting. I don't... I'm gonna have to look into that. That appears to be a bug. Um, maybe it's the gizmos need to be on. I'm not sure why that was happening. Anyway, I'm going to select them all and enable U speed limit, set that to 50, and then I'm going to set this path up to loop. So I'll grab the final waypoint, number 164, and assign the new route point as one. And when we do that, you can see that there's a line drawn between the final point and the first point indicating it's a loop. I'll just remove that so you could see how if it's not assigned, there's no line. And if it is assigned, you have a line. So at this point we have two AI waypoint routes that our cars can drive on. Let's go ahead and set up the spawn points for these routes. So I have 12 spawn points in the scene and these are just objects that use, um, they're, they're basically just for visualization. The only thing we need is the transform position and rotation. Um, I'm going to take all of these and just kind of nudge them into place and then I'm going to move them as necessary. Okay, so for vehicle one, that's the starting vehicle. He'll spawn right here. Vehicle two is spawn point two. And these are, these objects basically just have a, a mesh on them so that we can visualize what the car will look like. Um, you could remove that so you don't have that mesh in your scene. Actually what I'm going to do at this point because these waypoint routes are, are a little there's too much information right now. I'm going to disable the mesh renders on them. Okay, so now we can see a little bit more clearly. Let's also, on the waypoint route settings, disable the gizmos so that we can see. Now there's not a bunch of stuff just in our way. So in the template scene, there's 12 of these vehicles. This race uses 14. I'm just going to duplicate. And I'll rename these appropriately. So 13 and 14. Now I don't think these are on the ground, but I, I definitely need to to orient them a little bit better. So I'm going to reset the X and the Z orientation. Um, I'm going to align the height. And for this scenario, I'm just actually going to place them slightly above ground. So if your cars are falling through the ground, it's likely due to these spawn points being too low. 
so now that they're all in place, I'm just gonna tie them in a, a little bit more, make sure. They look pretty decent. For the most part, I think I did an okay job. But you might want to control exactly where your cars are. And this is how you would do that. I have an extra one. Okay. So all of these back ones are going to need to move. So this one will go here. Let me just drag all of these back a little bit. Okay, so now we have our spawn points set up and they look pretty good. I will go ahead and disable them now. And in the race manager, we have a spawn points array and we have 13 of these now. So let's increase that size and spawn, and I'm just gonna actually expand this entire array and I'm going to ping all these spawn points. Well, actually we don't need to ping them. We could see. So spawn point one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I just wanted to make sure that they all line up together. Um, Okay, so the reason there's only 12 here is because it's an array and we're starting at one instead of zero. So the other field in this array next to the spawn point is the starting AI point or the starting AI route that you want that vehicle to go on. So we can give these routes a, a number so we can identify them. So car AI waypoint route one, that will, that will be used for the bottom row of vehicles. So let's see, I guess I do need to turn these on. So that will be all of the odd numbers. We'll use waypoint one. Let me just turn these on and make sure. So all of these on the bottom, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, those will all use waypoint route 1. So let's go ahead and assign those. So we got 1, 3, Five, seven, nine, eleven, and thirteen. What does that say? Twelve. I don't think I changed it. Okay. And all of the top row vehicles those will use AI waypoint route two. So basically that's everything that's not assigned yet. I think my phone beeped, sorry about that. All right, so go back to the race manager and we'll assign the even. Hmm. 
I misassigned one of these. I'll go back and verify they're all right. So the evens will get waypoint route two. So now what this does is whenever a vehicle spawns into one of these spawn points, it's gonna assign, if it's an AI vehicle, it's gonna assign it to that AI waypoint route. And that's basically how that works. So with all of these spawn points assigned, let's just go ahead and verify. Spawn point one is using route point one, two is using route point two, three is using one, four is using two, five is one, six is two, seven is one, eight is two, nine is one, 10 is two, 11 is one, 12 is two, and 13 is one. Okay, cool. So those are all set up properly. So now we have set up our spawn points. We've set up our waypoints. Um, let's go ahead and create a, a plane and we're just going to make this pretty, pretty big. That way we could get our mini map shot. And we'll assign a grass texture to it. Yuck. I don't like that grass texture. Um, So we could create a new material and tile it a little bit. And, but for right now, I'm just gonna leave it like that. Well, I should create a new material and tile it in case one of you guys just doesn't know how. So now that I have a new material, um, make sure that it's just standard. Select the green grass and I'll just pull that on here. And now we can adjust the tiling for this. Let's try something like that. That looks better than what it did. Um, actually, we want to, yeah, that's good enough. So we will turn off the grid lines under gizmos and now we could just get a decent screenshot let's do a print screen nothing fancy let's take it into actually let's take it into we could take it into paint but we'll just pop it into photoshop and create a 1024 resolution you could use a different workflow to create a higher resolution. I'll, I'll let you do that however you like. Um, okay, so I just basically pasted that in here and let's see. Where is my screenshot? Okay, so let's just paste the entire screen there and just grab this. That's easier. Control C, and then we'll paste that in. Control T, uh, T and scale it up a little bit. There we go. And we will do save as PNG and we'll just save it as minimap one. Wait for Photoshop to finish saving. 
if you grab files from Photoshop before they finish saving, you could have issues with them in Unity. Um, so if any of your textures end up becoming corrupted, that could be the reason. So now I'll just bring this minimap in. And some kind of issue is preventing me from dragging, which is not good. Not good. Um, I'm going to pause the video and restart in a moment. Okay, so I'm back. I had to restart the PC to fix that bug. I don't know why that happens. Sometimes it does, though. All right, so I'm going to bring my minimap texture in, and now I have a 1K screenshot that I can use. And let's go ahead and assign it. So this minimap texture was used here. Um, so this scene is actually, this racetrack is actually a lot bigger than the default racetrack that was included. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just grab this minimap and I'll duplicate it and sign the new texture. Update that there. And I'll just scale this up so it matches. And let's see. So the minimap is on top. And we could see the geometry protruding through, so that will help us. And really all we're doing is trying to align it. That looks pretty spot on, actually. I love it when that happens. Okay, so cool. And then I will just pull it down under the geometry a little bit. So this minimap is set with the layer minimap. The minimap camera will only render that layer. Um, let's see, we don't need anything from the old environment. We will turn those scene components back on, but I think what we need to do first is, let's see, make sure we spawn, there's one more step. We need to set up the actual race manager checkpoints. Um, so the, these are primarily used by the race position tracking system. Um, Okay, I guess that's good enough. Um, so they work similar to the AI waypoints. You're just gonna spawn them where you need them. Uh, so I'll hold down Alt. I'll, I'll just uh, basically put them at random points. For the most part, evenly spaced. I guess it's not really random since I'm evenly spacing them. And around curves, you might want to use a few more uh, so you have more accurate position tracking. Basically, the vehicles use these to determine how far along on the racetrack they are. And the final point will be basically the finish line point. And for each of these points, what we'll do now is we will increase um, 
let's increase their scale on the Z axis and on the Y axis. And we could pull them up a little bit more. Just to be sure, I'm, I'm just going to make them even bigger. And I'll just make them a little wider. Make So if the car does not hit these waypoints, its position tracking is not going to work properly. Now for each of these waypoints, I will go ahead and rotate them a little bit. And there we go. So now we have all of our waypoints set up. Let's go ahead and disable the mesh render. And I think that's about it. Let's go ahead and enable those disabled canvases and that checkpoint manager. Um, so yeah, we basically just customized the first template scene in the quick race system you could duplicate these if you want and just create as many races as you want now what i'm going to do is um, go back to the menu system so many folders open all right so game template main menu and here we have our canvas quick race selection screen object. And what we want to do is adjust the script on this. So this script holds race data. So we have race data 0, 1, and 2. And each of those race data, there's a tutorial that goes in depth about race data and shows how you could modify all of this but basically they hold a scene name you can name the race this is what shows up in the UI you could give it a description you can set a menu image so I use that menu image um, I'm actually just going to change this out um, so the menu image is a sprite so I'm going to duplicate our mini map texture you could create better images I'll turn that into a sprite um, so we were customizing race data zero let's go ahead and assign that and so the scene name has to match the scene that you're using. That's how Unity knows what scene it is. And it also needs to be added to the build settings if you're creating a new scene. And we'll go over that in a few minutes. Um, so at this point, our erase data zero still has a reference to that old scene. And all we've done is really just update the minimap. And I think we had 13. We can increase the amount of erasers. I'm just gonna leave it at eight. So the player I have spawning as, again, all of this is gone through in 
more precise detail in a separate tutorial video, but the player vehicle is marked as player, so it's just going to spawn the default player prefab, and uh, all of the AI vehicles have a reference to the AI vehicle prefab. You would just add more AI vehicles to this index if you want, and you could set some prizes. Let's just say first place will get 10,000, second place will get 3,000, and third place will get 750. Um, yeah, so at this point, when we press play, it should just work. Create a profile, load it, select quick race. We can see we have our new image up here. We'll go ahead and select this race. And, it, and yeah, it, it did load everything properly for us. The minimap, it looks like that needs some adjustments. Um, but it looks like the AI vehicles are doing what they need to do. So I'll just let those AI vehicles run and we can I don't know if that's going to make them more visible. Oh, put the gizmos on. No, we still can't see them from far away. But so they're they're following their paths at this point. And let's go ahead and take a look at the mini map because that's something that we need to adjust. So specifically, what we're looking at is the size. So the mini map is set to orthographic projection. Let's play with the size and just increase this a bit. So for some reason, can't see it right now. Okay, so the far is also something we need to adjust. Um, or we could bring the position down. So let's say we want to set, what is the race data looking for? So the race data is where we actually set the minimap settings. So we want to lock the position of the minimap, but we also want to set the camera size, which is there. So. All right. So basically at this point, you're gonna fine tune exactly where you want your mini map to be. Um, when it's set to lock position, it's not going to, to move the mini map. So that would indicate that you want your entire track visible on the mini map. And for that, Let's see. We could rotate it if we want. We basically have all of the basic controls that we need, but it's really up to you to customize how you want the mini map to look. Um, I'm actually just going to leave it right around here. So let's see, 650 was the size that I went with, maybe a little bit smaller. Let's do 620. And the far of the mini map clipping plane is, it basically just needs to have the mini map within view. 
and the grass is also pulled way down too. So that's just something that you could clean up. Um, but from, from that sense, let's just go ahead and set this, create another tab for the inspector. I'm just going to lock one so I could see the values that I need as I copy of. So the transform position that we're setting and all we adjusted was X and the size is changed to 620. And there's the AI racers, they're still going. So they've probably done a few laps at this point. Um, I think the only thing that I want to do, I want to try to not adjust that default orthographic. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull those two planes up in the race scene. That should work. So I'll go back to the race scene. I could close this duplicate inspector now. I will find that grass plane that I put in and just pull that up. And the same thing with the minimap plane. Just pull that up a little bit. That should be good enough. I'll save it, jump back into the main menu. And I'll reselect this race. And this time I'll I'll just go through and I'll race. Uh, we saw that the racers were were going around the track with no problem. So for a race like this, I would probably disable the waypoint arrow, um, which it seems like it's going a little slow. And I'm using a keyboard controller instead of the Xbox controller right now. If you're wondering why I'm driving so poorly. Now when the player hits the final checkpoint, the, the race is over and the default camera is enabled in the background. So if you want to change what, what kind of perspective you get, you could play with this camera a little bit. You could put a UI piece back there, but, but basically that's what's happening. Um, so we won. And the other racers are still racing. Just go ahead and click continue. We completed the race and that's it. I think um, at this point, the only thing we really want to do is make sure that we disable that arrow because it's really not necessary for the scene. So I will disable show waypoint arrow and I'll save the project. Any time you change a scriptable object, you want to make sure you save the project. I'll jump back into that race. And there we go. The waypoint arrows off and that's about it. So we've completely customized the first race in the template. And if we want to 
create another race, we can just duplicate that race. Uh, we'll call this race four. And we'll actually need to duplicate the scene as well. Um, and we'll call this quick race four. So race data four, we'll load scene quick race four. We'll just call it test and description test. And yeah, that's about it. Um, so at this point you can customize the scene any way you like. We'll save the project again and go to file build settings, the new race we made, we'll make sure to add it to the build settings. And one more thing that I didn't really show you in the race system. So when, what these AI waypoint routes can do is, uh, we, we have an automatic junction configuration helper this is what we use to make sure the AI can basically merge into different waypoints if they detect a vehicle in front of them. And the way that works is, um, let's see, I'll put this up here. We're gonna wanna look at the gizmos a little bit. So select the route settings, enable the gizmos again. We'll zoom out so I could see everything. Select both routes. There we go. Um, so I'll select waypoint route one and automatic junction configuration helper. I'll drag waypoint route two in there, and then a button will appear. Will appear, and what this does is when you when you press it, as long as there's the same amount of waypoints for each route, well, it, it won't error out. But what it's going to do is it's going to assign junctions to adjacent waypoints, and that's basically what we just did. So now you see there's another line with an arrow that says if if so if waypoint one sixty three is the current target for the AI waypoint or for the AI car and it detects a vehicle right in front of it, it will change to to waypoint 154 in the adjacent route that's configured. And we could do the same thing in the opposite direction. And now we have the ability for the cars to change lanes. And if you have multiple routes, you could just set up multiple junctions so that AI cars are able to traverse the routes. And at that point, we'll save the scene and just turn those off. Let's go back into the main menu. We'll press play, go to quick race selection. And here we're going to Let's see, we only have three. Oh, I still need to assign that new race data to, to this array in the menu. So I'll assign race data four as the new index. Now I'll hit play. And here we have our test scene with our description test. Let's go ahead and load into it. Every time I press play, I keep picking up the Xbox controller. And yeah, that's basically it. So now what I'll do is, so that car, let's see, it's gonna be hard to try to chase these guys down and, and make them change lanes, but they're gonna use their sensors and if there's ever an obstacle or you're in front of them, they'll start to change lanes. As you adjust physics settings and start customizing the races, you could create scenarios where it will just trigger that. 
Um, so at this point, we've gone through the race customization and configuration process, which should really let you get up and running, create your own races, customize your races, and just gets you to a point where you can actually work with the template to create a, a project. The other big thing, there, there is a tutorial for this, but I might as well, since I'm in the video, go ahead and show you how to customize the AI or the player car. So there are two player cars by default. Let's say we want to create a third or we just want to customize it. It doesn't matter. I'll just create a third. So I'll control D to duplicate. This car will be called cart two. And let's go ahead and so for this, um, this is using prefab variants. They don't need to be. Um, depends how you want to upgrade your project, etc. But what I'm going to do is I'll just go into a new scene. I'll drag this prefab into the scene and then focus on it. Let's get a little closer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unpack this prefab. So we, you could unpack the prefab or you could unpack pack it completely. I'll just select, select unpack completely. And now it's just a standard game object structure in the scene. And what we want to do is basically replace this, this car model. So I'll disable that. Let's go ahead and turn off those gizmos for right now. Um, I did bring in that fantastic race bowl, T, T bowl race car. Let's find the prefab, go ahead and drag that in here. And what we want to do here, and you could get more detailed instructions in the actual tutorial video, but we want to assign the wheels. So let's go ahead and delete this car model. Now we could see what's missing. So we need to assign the, the mesh and the mesh transform for each of those four wheels. I'm going to unpack this prefab completely too. And I'll just put all this stuff up one. So front right wheel, we'll take wheel R. And front left wheel, we'll take wheel L. Back right wheel, and back left. And the next thing I'll do is I'll press this Align Wheel Colliders button. So for the colliders, let's go ahead and these are the colliders that we're adjusting. And I disabled the gizmos. I think that's why I can't see them. Let's just make them a little smaller. Yeah, there we go. And let's go ahead and hit that align wheel colliders button. And that for the most part, you've probably seen the wheel colliders move into place, but we need to adjust the radius as well as the Y position. So we'll move these down a little bit. Let's see, it's, I don't see it on the top yet. I'm going to move it up a little bit more. Actually, when you're doing this, you should get into orthographic mode, which is what I'm in. Um, Right about there's the middle. So let's try 41. Maybe 42. Oh, that's the mass. Uh, radius, here we go. 36, that actually looks good. Could probably be a little bit 
bigger. Let's do 37. That might be too big, but good enough. Um, so at this point, I have my my new car model in, and that's all set up. The avatar is out of position. You can take these cameras and you or the um, sorry the there were mirrors, and you could pull them into position. I'm not gonna go full in, but basically you would you would pull those into position and align them with the car's camera. They have uh, a shader that they use as a mask. You could create a custom shaped mask if you wanted. And just adjust the position and scale of those to get them into place. And for the avatar driver, we'll just pull him back a little bit. Just leave him in there. Basically, you're just trying to align him as best you can. And again, the, he's covered in the tutorial video, so you could see how to make all of the necessary customizations. But what you would generally want to do is, um, on his rig, you can replace the steering wheel with the one that comes with the car. Um, and that's about it. Um, so we'll rotate this steering wheel to match, um, do a manual rotation. Actually, I'll put this one back in. And then I'll rotate the steering wheel. And really, you're just playing with these objects until they're pretty much aligned. And then you could go into the avatar settings and play with them too. Uh, but this, for the most part, seems okay. Let's scale it up a little bit. And you'll just go back and forth until you get to a good position. Um, that's good enough for now. So now I will go ahead and create a new prefab. Well, I'll just actually overwrite that prefab. I'll replace anyway. And I, I believe it should just work. So the player vehicles are assigned in the player vehicle scriptable object. So we want to add a new index change it to three, give it a name, uh, call it test. The price will be zero. And we'll just assign the new prefab. And that's about it. Um, oh, one thing that I did not show was, so for all of the customizable pieces, for example, the, the on the car body. This is going to be where you need to do some customization. So there's a customization rim material, neon light, body, and window material. So the neon light is still part of the car. Um, it's actually under particles, neon glow. You don't need to change that at all. So our car that we configured still has that. But since we deleted the old car, we don't have the customization for the, the body, the rim, and the window material. So let's go ahead and set that up as best we can right now. And I'll go into a little bit more detail. Again, this is all covered in the player car customization tutorial. So I do recommend checking that out. Um, so the car body, the customization body material goes on the car body and the wheels get the customization rim material and the glass for the car gets the customization window material. So let's go ahead and disable that. We only brought that into the scene just to reference and see what it looks like. So we'll give this one the rim material. 
So the material index value, if your object has multiple materials, uh, you would set the material index that you want to target. This wheel only has a single material, so when, when we change the color using the customization system, it's going to adjust the main color, which will also affect the, the tire color a little bit. Um, so this material is not perfectly set up for this case, but we can still put that material on the wheels just to kind of get something working. But you do want to have a separate rim material for your customization for it to work in the best way possible. The glass will get customization window material and the body will get customization body material. And that basically just hooks it up to the car customization system that's in the main menu. The only other thing that we can still adjust is the body collider. We still have the old vehicle body collider on here. Uh, where's that at? There we go, car mesh collider. So if we go up here, let's see, he should have a collider in here for us. Maybe he doesn't though. So we can actually just like use LOD two as a collider. Let's use this one as a collider. Or you could use basic box primitives. Those are fastest if you're doing, if you're looking for the fastest way, but So we'll assign that new collider to the mesh filter and the mesh collider. And it looks super tiny. It's got the wrong orientation. Um, let's just scale this up a bit. Not really the way you want to handle it with colliders. You, it's pref, it's preferred for the physics system that you have actual one-to-one -one scale. But this will basically do the job. But this is definitely not how you want to set up a collider. Let's see if, well, I, I don't want to put a more expensive collider because, like the the main LOD anyway. I think you get the point. Um, let's go ahead and update this prefab. Just drag and drop over it. Actually, you can also do overrides and it will show all of the, the properties that have changed on the prefab and we could just apply all. Um, Unity did give a warning when we did that. I'm not sure why. But anyway, so at this point, we can go back into the menu scene. We don't need to save that scene. Go ahead and press play. And our new vehicle should show up. Uh, in the in the garage and here we go let's go ahead and buy it for zero dollars now we could try to customize it and let's see what happens nothing's happening oh that's the rims so body paint yeah there we go Okay, cool. It's working. Neon lights. Yes, that's working. Window tint. Yep, that's working too. All right, cool. So we got our new car in. It's being customized. Let's go ahead and jump into the new quick race we set. And here we are. We have our new vehicle. It's it's being customized. Um, 
could still use some more work. The rear view mirrors and side view mirror are not in the right place. And yeah, so we have our race game working. And at this point you could customize it however you like. And let's see if I can get one of these guys. Uh, it's too hard. Uh, I wanted to trigger them to change lanes, but anyway, that pretty much concludes this tutorial. Uh, we covered creating new races, customizing races, and creating new player cars that we could customize in the menu system and load into those races. The process for adjusting the AI vehicles is the same as the player vehicle, except you don't need to put the customization scripts on them. And that's about it. Thanks for checking out this video. I hope you enjoy the kit. I'll see you soon. Bye.